This video is to show how to use the Brothers Scanner attached to the teacher computer in the computer lab. This is what the scanner looks like, and it is attached to the teacher computer on the desk next to it. You will need to log into the teacher computer in order to use the scanner. Once you are logged in, you are going to start the scanning software by clicking Start. And it's listed here as Control Center 3, but if you don't see it there, you can also go to All Programs in the Brother folder, in the DCP folder, and go to Control Center 3. This will open up the scanner's Control Center, where you can do some additional settings. At the top of this, there's a Configuration button. This is going to be important for you to tell the scanner how you want to scan your document. I usually use the scan and image settings. Right now ours is set to Adobe Reader 9 as the target application and the file type is PDF. This is great for any documents and worksheets that you might have. If you want to scan a picture, you may want to change it to Microsoft Paint and Windows BMP or JPG. Probably JPG is best for pictures. You can also choose your file size. If you need a high quality picture, you're going to want a large file size. If not, you can keep it in the medium or even go down to small if it doesn't matter the quality of your picture. Um, today I'm going to be scanning um, some math drops in the bucket for third grade. So I'm going to pick the target application as Adobe Reader 9 and the file type as PDF. Okay. This is changing the settings in my software button, which means I have to use the button in the software to use that. If I also want to set the device button on the scanner itself, I can do that. And I've already set it here to match what I want. So I can either press the button in the software on the computer or on the device itself. After I get my settings set, I click OK. And then I have to get my document ready. This is what the scanner looks like on the top. And if you have a multi-page document, something you have a lot of pages of and you want to scan them all to one file, you can use the feeder in the top of the scanner. If you have just one page that you need, you can place it on the glass. That's great for a page or a picture. If you have multi-pages like this, you're going to want to put it in the tray. The pages go in the tray face up and with the top going into the scanner. There's also a picture of that on the scanner to remind you. Now that I have my document on the scanner and ready, I can either use the device, the buttons on the scanner itself, or I can go back to my computer and scan from there. I'm going to choose from, to scan from the computer, and the one that I set up for this scan is Image. So I'm going to click on the Image button. This is going to start the scan. The pages are being pulled through the feeder on the top, and then they will come out just below the feeder. Each page takes a little bit to scan. I would encourage you not to multitask by opening other windows during this process because if you accidentally hit the space bar when this window is up on top, it will cancel the scan and you will have to start it over. So if you'll just use this for scanning, if you need to do something else while it's scanning, go log on to another computer and use that one instead for your other task. You can see each page takes maybe a little less than a minute. And remember we told it to scan this document as a PDF file. So it's going to be one file with all of these pages in it. I did about 10 pages. There probably is a limit to how many pages you can put in the top of the scanner. Um, I find 10 to be a manageable file size when I'm done. So I like to do about 10 at a time. Um, unless the document doesn't split into tens very well. 
This can does take several minutes with um, multiple pages. So I've edited out some of the wait time just so you don't have to watch the progress of every single page. And when the scan completes, it's automatically going to open up Adobe with my PDF of the scanned document. So now you can see my PDF file is here. It is the um, document that I have scanned. It has multiple pages, 1 through 10. I can flip through them at the top. You could file and save this file. You can save a copy on your H drive so that you'll have this for the future. Um, the reason I'm scanning this is because teachers want to use it with their Smart Notebook file. So I'm going to show you how to put this into Smart Notebook. If you have a PDF of something you want in Smart Notebook, you can open the PDF in Adobe Reader and then click on the Print button. Now when you're choosing your printer, you need to choose the one that says Smart Notebook Print Capture. Smart Notebook Print Capture will send this document to Smart Notebook and each page will be a new page in the notebook file. So I choose Smart Notebook Print Capture. I'm going to choose all of the pages because I want them all to go to the notebook. And then I'm going to click OK. Now it's inserting my printed pages. Smart Notebook always opens this little blue window, Welcome to Notebook Software. You can close it at any time just by hitting the X. And here's my document. Now right now it's on page 10 of my document, which was number 50, drops in the bucket. So I'm going to scroll up to the top and look at number 1. That's number 41. You can see all of my pages are over here. It automatically extended my notebook page so the document would fit. So now the teacher can just scroll through as she writes on it on the smart board and not have to worry about readjusting her document camera or anything like that. So now that these are in Smart Notebook, I want to save them as a Smart Notebook file. So I'm going to do File, Save As, and I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's saved in my H drive. And I have a special folder I've been using called Third Grade Math. I made that folder for this project, and this is drops 41 through 50. And then I can click on Save. And it's going to save my 10-page Smart Notebook file. So when I want to use this with my class, I can just open the Smart Notebook file. So I'm going to go ahead and close Smart Notebook. I've already saved it. This PDF file is not saved. It's in a temporary folder that will occasionally get cleaned out. If I need to save the PDF version, then I would have to do File and save a copy and save it to my H drive. If not, if I don't need the PDF file, I can just close it and eventually that, um, those temporary files will get cleaned out by the system. When I'm done, I can also close the scanning software and log off the computer. That is how you get from a paper copy to Smart Notebook.